Here's how to use buttons to switch between sprite animations in Unity. First, I'm going to go ahead and import my sprites. After you've imported the sprites, the next thing you're going to want to do is make sure they're prepared for the animation. So click on a sprite sheet, change it from single mode to multiple mode, and then hit Sprite Editor, and then apply the changes you just made, changing it from single to multiple, of course, so that it saves that. Then change the slice type. We're going to change the slice type from automatic to grid by cell count instead of by cell size. I find it easier to count the columns and rows than to get the actual size of each of them, personally. So, one, two, three columns, one, two, three, four rows. The fourth one is invisible in this sprite sheet, of course. So, columns, we got three. Rows, we got four. Okay, hit slice. Okay, next if you want to zoom in here, you can change the pivot point if it's necessary for your sprites. So just zoom in, click on one, drag the dot down to where you want the pivot point to be, then go look down here at the custom pivot area and see where it's located. We're at 0.5 by 0.3 roughly. I'm not going to be too specific, but you can be if you want to be. So then go back to the slice view, change the pivot from center to custom, and then change the custom pivot to, as I found out, 0.5 by 0.3, which is what I want. Hit slice. And now, as you can see, every single sprite has a consistent pivot point. And that's what I wanted. We're going to hit close and save. Next we go to dash, and we're going to do the same thing with my other sprite. Now that the sprites are prepped for animation, we just drag them into the scene itself just so that it generates the proper animation file. And we got to give it a name. So in this case, this one should be called dab. And then this one should be called dash. Perfect. Uh, now we can get and delete them from the scene. They were just created so that I could go ahead and have these sprite things prepped and the animations ready to go. Next, we're going to create an animator controller. So you right click in the assets pane and can go to create and then go down to animator controller. As you can see here, we're going to call it uh, dab dash switch. Why not? So now here in this empty animation controller pane, you can see we have a few different things. These are basically going to create a flow chart that tells the computer how you want the animation to be handled for this particular thing. So we're going to drag the dab and the dash animations into here. You want to drag the animations and not the, um, the animation controllers that were generated for these two. Obviously it won't even work. Make sure you're dragging in, dropping in the, uh, these little triangles here. Those are the raw animations that you want to implement. After that, it's time to create transitions between them. So, go to any state, click right, make transition, and go to dash. Any state, right click, make transition, go to dab. Now you can tell it that regardless of what state it's currently in, you have transition options that'll take you to either one of those two. So next you're gonna go to the transitions that you just made, click on one of them, and make sure that has exit time is unchecked, as well as make sure that the transition duration is set to zero. This is because it's a sprite animation and you don't want any delay. You want it to be very snappy. I mean, typically you do. Circumstances may vary, of course. There, now the transition will be instantaneous. Speaking of which, how are we going to transition between the two of these? Well, up here in the Animator tab, there's a Layers tab and a Parameters tab. See this? Layers, Parameters. You're going to go to Parameters, click on a new, create new parameter, the plus sign, and we're going to create a trigger. We're going to call this uh, Dab Trig. All lowercase, all one word. I'll create a new one, a new trigger called dash trig. Simple enough, right? We're gonna use these to tell which button is pressed and what it does. Now, in order to make this implemented, we click on the transition and then go over to the conditions list. Create a new one, and in this case, we're gonna make sure that the dash trig is set. What this is telling the computer is that whenever the dash trig is set, we wanna play this animation. Now, over here, you can probably guess, we go to the conditions, add a new one, we're making sure that it's dab trig. So, whenever dab trig is active, the dab is playing. Whenever dash trig is active, the dash is playing. Simple enough, right? Next, click on the character we want to apply these animations to. In this case, our little stand-in right here. We're going to scroll and make sure that we have an add component option open. And then we're going to drag and drop the dab dash switcher into this add component area. Now that's going to be our primary animation controller for this character. Next, you're going to want to take the following steps and apply them to both buttons. Select the button in question, go to the on click area where the list is empty, add a new item to the list. Then drag and drop the character in question into the none object box. After this, what you're going to want to do is go over to the no function drop down box, 
go down to Animator, and then click on Set Trigger Stream. Since we're on the Dab button, we're going to want the Dab Trig to be active whenever this button is pressed. So, we're going to type in Dab Trig. Now, we're going to repeat these steps for the other button. And now, if we've done everything right, let's click on Play. Behold! When we click on Dash, it switches to the Dash Pose. When we click on Dab, it switches to the Dab Pose. So that's an easy way that you can use buttons and triggers to change animation flow using an animation controller. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, <laughs> I'm not very good at Unity, I am still learning it, but I did realize this would be a helpful tutorial to create for everyone else in case anyone was having the troubles I was having figuring this out. So. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, be sure to subscribe. We do all sorts of game development videos here on the channel between me and my wife. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. Until then, catch you guys later.